published, there was a recent, well, I guess it was two years old, but it made the news recently, saying the internet was connected by paths, any two nodes was a path of, at most, 19 steps between them uh, on the internet. So any web page, you can get 19 links to any other page. That means it was completely connected. I'm not sure if I completely believe that. Um, but, but think your graph is probably connected somehow. Um, yeah, so, so, okay, so find the minimum cut and then, and then cut the graph that way. Yeah, so we're, we're going to do, um, so the problem with just the minimum cut is that you might find just cutting off H is also going to have a cut of size 1, the same as cutting between C and E here. And so if you just find the minimum cut, you may find this clustering. And this, if you just look at this as S and everything else as T, then what's going to happen is that the normalized cut's going to be a lot larger. This, this H here, what's going to happen is that this will have, um, it's going to have a volume of only one and a cut of one, so it's going to be one plus something. And here we got down to 0.36, right? So it's going to, this cut, normalized cut would be a lot larger. So just the smallest cut is not quite going to do it. Um, so and you can do that with some flow algorithms, which could be tricky. So instead, what we're going to do is we're going to look at this matrix and analyze the matrix to find a good cut. We're going to, and this will be called the spectral one. When we decide you want to stop cutting, or should you be cutting it? Because I've seen like Wolfram Alpha added Facebook graphs. Yeah. So I linked my Facebook and Wolfram Alpha accounts and it made a graph. So I saw that there are a lot of small graphs and then some of them are connected and some are not. Yeah. So if I have high school friends, that's a connected graph, but then I have university friends and they don't know them, so there are two different graphs. Right, right. So I might not want to cut them if they're already separate. If they're if they're already oh, yeah. so, so there's they're, no they're, edge connecting those. Well, two. those are the things that are connected through you, right? Okay. So yeah. they they, they, <laughs> they still aren't connected. Okay. Um, uh, but so so uh, the question of how far down do you go before you stop? I don't know. There's not really a great answer there. If if anything, this this method of finding this elbow for some cost function you have, I talked about last week Monday, is probably. The best thing to do, but even that is kind of you have to come up with some cost function that you want, and then you know kind of look at the data. So there's there's not a great answer for that, unfortunately. There's there's there are answers that make sense in specialized cases, but not in general purposes. Um, yeah, yeah. Okay. So we're going to use this the spectral method looking at this graph, and we're going to look at this this matrix here. Think of it as we only write a matrix with these big parentheses, and we're going to say this is matrix A. Uh, um, this is the adjacency matrix. We're going to look at another matrix based on this graph, um, uh, uh, which is D, which is going to be even simpler than this adjacency matrix. It's going to be, uh, 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 this is going to be the degree matrix. Um, of the graph, and it's just going to count for every edge, I mean for every vertex, how many edges does it have? And it's going to write this on, um, it's, and, and it, it's going to write this on the, uh, write this on the uh, diagonal of the graph. So this will, A is going to be 3, B is going to be 2, um, let's see, C is going to be 3, uh, D is, is 3, E is 3, uh, F is going to be 3 again, um, G is 2, and H is 1. Right? Yep. Huh? I'm okay, good. And then the rest is going to be all zeros. Right? So this takes just linear in the space of all the, of all the vertices. Okay, so we have this adjacency matrix and this um, degree matrix of the graph, and then we're going to have what's called the Laplacian matrix. Um, this is always capitalized because this is named after Laplace. 
and it's going to be D minus A. So the, the degree matrix will always be the same size as the A, as the adjacent. Right, so this is, if there are n vertices, right. usually you say there are n vertices and m edges. If there are n vertices, then this is n by n, and this is also n by n. And so L is also going to be n by n. Okay, so, so it's going to be D minus A. So I've got it written out completely in the, in the notes, so let me just write up part of it here. Um, so let's see, so first column is 3, minus 1, minus 1, minus 1, 0, 0, 0, zero. then we have minus 1, 2, 0, minus 1, 0, 0, 0, minus 1, let's see. Uh, 0, 3, minus 1, minus 1, 0, 0, 0. And this is going to be minus 1. This is for vertex D. Minus 1, minus 1, 3, 0, 0, 0. So it's just like the negative of, yeah, the negative of A. With right. So, so you, for every term here, so because I know self loose, this, uh, um, that all the elements on this diagonal were zero, and all these were either zero or, or, or one. And then, so everything um, that's gonna be on the, um, that's gonna be on the on diagonal of the Laplace end is, is gonna be the same as in um, this matrix D. So if you don't have side groups, then you, the diagonal is the same as D. Right. And then everything off it is either going to be a zero or a um, minus one. And because this one is symmetric, and because I didn't have a directed graph, this one's also symmetric, then the Laplace is also going to be symmetric. Right? Um, all right, so the other cool properties of this is that if you look at any one of these, any one of these, um, columns. Let's look at the column here of, of A. Right? What's going to happen if I sum up all these values, it's going to be equal to zero. So the, the way of thinking about this is that there's some, there's some flow going through this graph. And there's like water flowing around in some weird way. And it's like, it's like one of these paintings from M.C. Escher. So the water keeps flowing, right? It's not really going anywhere. But th this, this, is, this number is basically telling you how much water is flowing into this node, and these are telling you how much water is flowing out, in particular, where the water is going. So there's three units of water flowing into A, and it's coming out to B, D, and C. And it's, so, so, and, and the, the, the water is conserved. Right, so they add up to zero. So the amount coming in is the same going out. Right, if you can see, where does this three come from? Well, also if I look at, because it's symmetric, also if I look at this row, now the row is saying, well, where's the water coming from? Well, it turns out it's coming from all the same places it's going to, so it's not really going anywhere. We'll talk about kind of the, the where water ends up in a flow in a matrix in, in the, in the last section of the course, but you can, but but here you can just think of it as flowing in and out, um, kind of kind of along these, uh, and this this Laplace matrix is is measuring um, how much flow there is, and so forth. Um, right. Um, okay. So now that we've defined this um, this Laplace matrix, what we're going to do is. Uh, um, we're going to take, um, we're going to find the eigenvalues and the eigenvectors of this, right? So I'm not going to talk so much how to actually uh, how to compute these, other than if you're doing this in MATLAB, then all you basically do is you type um, v and let's not use l, let's use uh, um, uh, what letter? Uh, um, R and 
of of i of l. So this is, you just call i on this matrix l, and it's going to spit out the eigenvectors and the eigenvalues. And I'll explain what these are next. So so if you take a course in linear algebra, probably in scientific computing, you'll probably look at how you how you actually compute this. But we'll, we're not going to worry about. It. We're just going to look at the properties of doing this, this these eigenvalues. And these eigenvalues are you know are like the spectral properties of a matrix. So that's why this will be called spectral cluster. Okay. So um, in particular, and and uh, an eigenvalue is is going to be a um, uh, well, let's say an eigenvector V um, of a matrix M is going to have the property that um, that M V is equal to lambda V um, for some scalar. Um, lambda and this this lambda um, this is um, this lambda is it's called the eigenvalue when um, um, the vector that we use is is normalized to one. So the vector is flexibility. It has multiple components. So it has more than the scale doesn't matter if I. If I scale this, if I multiply all the values by two and two here, then I can just multiply the scalar by two. So the, the normalization doesn't matter the structure so much. Um, so we normalize it to one, and then this is, is the eigenvalue. And the, this eigenvector, if you haven't seen this before, it's a really kind of cool and strange property, right? I have a, I have a, I have a I'm multiplying a vector times a matrix, and I'm getting back the result of a scalar times this vector. So like it seems weird that you can even have this property. Um, but um, <laughs> there's actually some, uh, if, if, if the matrix is, uh, um, if the matrix is full rank, then you're going to have as many of these, um, as many of these different distinct vectors as you have uh, vertices in your um, as you have vertices in your um, in, in the graph that's used to define your matrix. Um, right. So let me. Question. Yep. Uh, are we ensure that the matrix would not be singular? Because that would translate to infinite eigenvalues. Um. Yeah. This. Um. So. If the. See, so, um, so, shoot, so, um, I, I think this is the case, but it, um, um, you can, um, please correct me if I'm wrong, and I'll, I'll, I'll check if I don't see this correctly. Um, but um, because you have elements on the diagonal, this sh shouldn't happen. So if the graph is not. Um, if the graph is not connected, you're going to have some other weird things happen. But I, um, I still think that won't be a problem. And so, so what's going to what's going to happen here is only the 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 first few eigenvectors and values are are going to be the important ones. So if you don't have it full rank for some reason, then those are going to be kind of the the tail end of what you're going to use. Um, so, so, so those aren't going to matter anyways. Um, so, I'll, there should there there should be some property. I, like, I don't think it will happen with the Laplace matrix, but um, I don't remember the the reasoning why. I'll, um, so, I don't want to tell you the wrong thing. Um, ah, okay. So, so then, how's it similar if that that it has to have? Uh, um, then, then it has to, has to be full rank, right? And then it will have all the eigenvalues be defined. Actually, the matrix is always singular because if you multiply by the vector one, 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 
you'll get zero. So zero is always an eigenvalue. Right, right. So, so the, the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to actually write down at least some of the eigenvalues and eigenvectors, and we'll look at some of these properties. Okay. Um, so let me do this here. Right. So. Um, So if you look at the eigenvalues, um, the, the first eigenvalues can be zero. If you, if you, if you multiply, um, so if, if, if you use, um, it should be a square, yeah? What? It should be a square. So uh, because if it's not a square, we can use this unit. What? So it's not a square. So you can't be taking the eigenvalue. So I, I'm just defining what, what oh, the eigenvalue is. Oh, the other thing is that n multiplied by d is equal to lambda dot v. So basically, the dimension of m should be n multiplied by n, and the dimension of b is n multiplied by 1. So basically, right. the two side dimension should be the same. So m should be a square height. For this is a square height. So it's, yeah, I, it's n by n matrix. So, so, it's, it's so, so m is going to be an n by n matrix. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, oh, square, not square. a square. I thought you meant it was to the second power. OK, OK, yeah. So, so, so this will be for a square matrix. In particular, we're going to take the, the eigenvalue of, of this Laplacian matrix, just to find based on some graph. And, and that means it's always going to be square. Okay, so it's going to have n rows and n columns. Um, OK, so, uh, so if you have a graph, um, then, then you construct it this way. Then, as, as you're pointing out, you can, you can always have one one of the eigenvalues and eigenvectors, so that if you normalize it, because I have eight vectors here, it's going to be one um, over square root eight, one over square root eight, and so for um, for a b uh, h, so, so each of these is going to be one over square root eight, and so so it's, it's going to be a, a unit vector. Which is which is equal in in, um, in it's going to have equal weight for for all the vertices, and so th this one's always going to be there, and it's not going to tell us tell us uh, us anything interesting. Um, so the what's interesting is going to be the second eigenvalue and and corresponding eigenvector, and in this case for uh, this is going to be two seven eight. And the the values are going to be minus 0.36, minus 0.42, minus 0.20, minus 0.36, 0 0.17, 0 0.36, 0 0.31, and 0. This one is corresponding with A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H. And so this vector, this eigenvector, the second eigenvector, uh, um, the second eigenvector of the Laplacian is called the Fiedler vector. Um, and it, it's going to tell us, tell us a lot about the structure of the, of the graph. Um, so, so, the, so if I look at these these values here, what's kind of uh, striking about these values? They're increasing. They're not completely increasing, but these are going to be these are negative and these are positive, right? So these correspond with A, B, C, and D being negative, and E, F, G, and H being positive. 
Well, that actually told us the clustering that we wanted of this graph, right? It's on the negative and the positive. And so the right way of uh, thinking about this is actually you can, uh, you can draw a line here um, between, say, um, with putting zero in the middle. And then you can put these, these uh, um, the, the, all the vertices on this line based on their value, um, based on the value that, that they have in the Fiesler vector. Um, so this is going to be, um, so let's see, uh, A is going to be minus, um, let's do minus 0.5 and 0.5 A. Um, so then, let's see, we're going to put A is going to be here, um, B is going to be out here, C here, D is going to be the same spot as A, E is going to be here, F, G, and H. So, um, so then, the, the simplest thing we can do is that we can then just look at this, the, this, this placement of all the vertices on this line. And we can say, here's a cut. Everything on the left side of zero, all the negative numbers are S, and all of the positive numbers are T. Um, and so this, doing just this actually works pretty well. It's, it's not, so unfortunately, this is not going to be the optimal value for the, uh, for the normalized cut. But this generally works very well in finding a, a good normalized cut. And if you don't want to do any more work, you can stop right here. And th this, this is a, will probably give a, a pretty good split. Um, although if you look at this, there's still more structure you can exploit. What people typically do is that they'll look at this, they'll plot all these values, and, um, and then they'll sort them. They'll sort them based on their location along here. And then they'll look at every possible split along this sorted order. So they'll start by just having B in one cluster, which doesn't really make sense. Um, you can think of putting A and D, B, A and D in one cluster, which is maybe is, is, is better than just B, and C is closer to this other side, because it's, it's where the bridge is across these two clusters. So the, this is probably a little bit better cut, but the normalized cut is not as good as here. And, and this normalized cut is a value that you can update very quickly in a sort of order. You only need to keep track of the edges, um, uh, the edges that you're crossing as you're adding these values. So yeah, um, after you do the sorting, um, which you need to do in like, uh, which takes, uh, which, uh, which you need to do, um, uh, 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 which is n log n time on, on these values, then I, I think you can then spend linear time per edge in computing this, uh, this, um, computing the normalized cut of every of every possible um, partition that's along this sort of order. Um, don't don't quote me on that. It's you can at least you can definitely do it if it's sparse. It's linear time in the number of vertices. Um, if if the number of edges is proportional to that. Uh, if there are a dense number of edges, then there's 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 probably some way to do it. I don't. But but it, it, but generally, once you do this, and if you spend the time to sort them instead of just splitting them, which you can do in, in linear time, the extra log in, then you can check all of these different cuts. And sometimes you'll get a much better cut than just splitting at zero. Um, splitting at zero will tend to have the property that this graph is balanced on, on on either side of zero, so you have about the same number on this side and on and, and on this side. Um, sometimes if you have, sometimes you get one item which is way out here, and because of that, then everything else will tend to be pushed back. It's kind of balanced by weight around zero, um, more so than the number of nodes. So you don't always get the best cut right at zero. So you want to slide along here and look for the best cut. Um, right. right. Um, so so the, this is, um, so, um, so then just doing this is, 
is is the basic idea of the of the um, spectral cluster. You you start with this graph. You convert it um, into this. Um, you convert it. Um, and you convert it into the Laplacian um, matrix. You take the eigenvalues of the Laplacian matrix. You only need the second eigenvalue. Um, the so so actually, it's not always true. You always need the, the second eigenvalue. But okay, you you get the, the second eigenvalue, the second eigenvector, and then you either split at the zero point, or you sort them and then you scan them and find for the one that has the best normalized cut. So, so that's the whole procedure. Um, the, there's a couple of other, other important notes as well, though. If your graph is not connected, right, so if I didn't have this edge, or if you, if you didn't have, if you didn't actually have friends in your Facebook graph, and, you, and, and these were just imaginary friends, and you had two groups from high school and grad school, or, or, or high school and college, then, um, then your graph was disconnected, you would have a very good clustering. And what would happen is that um, the second eigenvector would then look something like this first eigenvector. It's, 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 it's not going to tell you, it's, it's going to be, it's going to be very strong information and tell you, um, as, and it's going to, um, so then it, it, it's, it, it's, it's going to give you a very obvious clustering. And then the then these will then the next ones will tell you about the information of the of, um, of the subgraphs, but in some weird way. So you want to split and then repeat this process. Um, but if you, if you if you assume it's it's connected, then you want to look at this second eigenvector, and this really gives you all the information. Um, so you can also look at the third eigenvector. Um, and this will tell you a little bit more information. Um, so here the, the value is going to be, um, the, this second eigenvalue here is going to be 1.11. Uh, 1 1. And so typically what I mean by second is you sort these based on the, the value of the eigenvalue, so the smaller ones first. And so um, this, this, this will be 1.11, 1 and let me just write up this information here. Uh, oops. Minus one point zero eight minus point three seven minus point zero eight minus point five one and zero point seven three. Okay, so let's look at this second eigen, um, 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 at the, the this second eigen vector here, and so you can think of this the same way you thought of the first one, but now instead of mapping just to this one-dimensional space, you can map to a two-dimensional space, right? So you can say the x-coordinate is the first eigen vector, and the y-coordinate is the second eigen. Or the, 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 the x part is the second and the y part is the third, sorry. Um, but that's not quite right either. Um, these eigenvalues tell you something about how important this is. And you want to, um, you can map it to R2, and you want to scale by 1 over lambda i. Right, so you want to, or 1 over the square root of lambda, let's see what I said. So I've seen it differently, but uh, yeah. So you want to scale by one over square root of lambda i. So if this is smaller, it has more importance. It stretches the x coordinate more. If this is larger than one, then this is actually shrinking these values. Right. So these values were, were um, you know, are, are going to be about in the range of between minus one and one. Um, but if I if if I divide by a large value, it's going to shrink them to be smaller. Where these, I'm going to be dividing by a small value, so it's going to make them even longer. So well, let me try and sketch what this graph looks like. So you're scaling that column or the whole? 
So I'm going to scale the placement of the vectors into two-dimensional space. Right? So let's see. So this is going to be. So um, instead of putting those values, you scale those actual values by one over root lambda. Right, so this is going to be v3 divided by 1 over root lambda 3 of, of all these vectors. And so now it's, this was on minus 5 to 0.5. And if I just look at 1, the scaling, the scaling doesn't matter. Um, but if, if I look here, it's, it's going to be about minus 1 to plus 1 and from um, plus 1 and minus 1 here. And so just going to kind of eyeball this with the scaling. What's going to happen is that A is going to be about here. So A was, was that, no, that was B, sorry. So B is here. It had a small negative x coordinate and then scaled. These are all multiplied by about 2 um, with the square root of that. So it's about out here, and this is also a little bit positive. Um, if I look at A and D, these are going to be exactly the same. So, and they're going to be about um, A plus D. They're, they're both going to be about right here. Um, if I look at C, it's, it's, it's going to be below this, this line. This value is now negative. And this is also negative. And I have edges here. Um, and then, let's see. So I've got a nice picture of this in the, in the notes. Um, so E is going to be down here. Uh, this value is positive. This one is, is negative. And then um, G is going to be even more negative down here. Um, F is going to be up here. Um, it's still going to be negative here, and this is going to be positive. And then H is the weird one. It's going to be pretty far positive and also really high. And it's only connected to F. Okay, so what's, what's happened here? This is, I've kind of laid out, this has told me these first two, um, the first two eigenvectors or the second and third eigenvectors have told me how to lay out this graph spatially um, in, in some way the best way I could. Right? So it's how to lay out spatially and kind of separating things based on how, how, how connected they seem to be based on how good, how good the cuts would be. Right? So it seems like there, there's two kind of good cuts here. There's the one cut here, which is saying these are pretty very well clustered. These are very well clustered. And then also H is off by itself, and it gets pulled way up here. Um, so, so even though it's not very far from the other ones, if you just look at the first or the second eigenvector, the Fiedler vector, when you look at the third one, it gets pulled up. It gets pulled up pretty far. Um, and so also notice A and D are in exactly the same location. Why is it? Well, why would it put them exactly the same spot? Well, if, if you look at the graph, there's really no difference between A and D. If I could switch them and they'd have all the same edges. They really interact the same way. So um, the first few, uh, first few eigenvectors has no way of distinguishing them. If, if, you, if I filled out the rest of them, and I, I, I've done this in the notes, um, you see in the very last eigenvector, it has one at, it has mostly zeros except for A and D. One of them is um, negative square root 2 and the other is positive square root 2. And the sign there is arbitrary. You could flip the signs of these things and it wouldn't, that they're, they're, they're only, they only make sense up to the value of the sign. And it says, I guess at the end I need to separate them, but I'm saving it until the very, you know, the, the very last eigenvector. Right, so this is, so, the, you know, it's kind of telling you uh, the, kind of the different way how to spread out this graph. Um, so you can kind of, I think I probably drew this one too big, but if, if you look in the notes, it's, it kind of gives you a good spatial sense of how to lay that. Um, right, so, so, so even though it, it, it told me that 
that F is further away from, from E and G because it's being pulled by H. And C is closer to this set than B is because it's connected and B is not connected. Right. Um, yeah? So I guess is the point that now that we have this graph in these coordinates, we can just use the other coordinates? Um, you could, yes. Well, so um, you could do that. Um, on this, that's one way of doing it. The really, um, you, you, you probably would not want to stop at just two coordinates. You can keep going and make it to an, an n dimensional space. So each of the, um, each of the next eigenvectors kind of represents a different dimension. And so what you're hoping is, what's happening is because we've sorted them based on their values, the, the, the larger the eigenvector, so like the one, the third one will be like the z coordinate, and hopefully the if the value for that one is going to be um, two point two point three one, um, right? So this one's going to be you're dividing it by this, the square root of this. So it's going to any of the values are going to be shrunk. So there's not going to be too much variation in this way. So you're not going to lose too much if you don't use all of them. Um, so you can probably, you know, just use the first few, and, and, and then you can run those clustering methods. Yeah. So that's that's one option. Or you can just use, um, or, or you can just, you know, place them on, on one dimension and use, you know, s s still just use this plate based on the normalized cut. Um, yeah. So at this point, you have, you have, you have lots of options. Um, another use is if you want to try and visualize the data. Of, of the graph. Um, this is a one way to spread out to try and draw a graph. When you're given a graph, you may not be given a layout like this that makes sense. It turns out there, there are better ways of doing it. Usually you put like spring forces between them and, and iterate through that, and that gives you some of the best drawings. But this is a good first approximation of how to try and lay it out in some visualization. Um, let's see, what else do I want to say? Okay, so one more thing you could do is you could say, I'm going to directly, instead of going to, to two clusters, now that I get all the work to do this, I